Welcome to the world of amazing extinct animals. Over here, Mac! Watch it! Go left! No, right! Hold it! Rats! We'll never get this museum to open on time! Hey, hey, excuse me, ladies and the uh, gentle ducks. We're not open for another 20 minutes. Who let you guys in? Hi, Henry. The museum's looking great. Oh, it was you. I should have known. Sorry, we just couldn't wait to see your new museum. So, what's it all about? It's called the Natural Henry Museum. And it's all about the most amazing, handsomest animal in the whole world. Which is? Me! Don't you think this is all a little egotistical, Henry? Egotistical? I don't even know the meaning of the word. It means you have a big head. Hmm. I just want to make sure that all the little lizards still to come, even a million years from now, will get the chance to know all about me. What kind of car I drove. Vroom, vroom. What I like to wear. Which is my best side. And what I ate. You know, you're not the first animal to leave a record for future generations. Many extinct animals have done just that. Stinky animals? Extinct animals. Species that aren't alive anymore. When there are none left, all gone. Then how do you know about them, smart guy? Countless thousands of animals aren't around anymore. But many of them have relatives that are. They're a living record of species long extinct. This monitor lizard may be the biggest in the world now, but an extinct lizard was once twice its size. So why not show it? Oh, they disappeared long before TV cameras came along. Also gone is the ghost wolf, which was much smaller than modern wolves. Maybe it wolfed down something bad. Some extinct animals had the features of more than one of their relatives living today. The quagga had the back end of a horse and the front end of a zebra. That's amazing! <laughs> Why can't we see one now? Sorry, Henry. You see, animals that are extinct were once perfectly suited to their living conditions. Yikes! Problem is, conditions change. Sometimes the climate's to blame. Sometimes other animals. One animal has caused thousands of extinctions. Humans. Hey, put that down! It's dangerous! Thanks to people, countless species have disappeared due to loss of homes, accidents, or hunting. The manatee had a relative called Stella's sea cow, hunted to extinction by sailors. They might just be hiding somewhere. When an animal hasn't been seen for over 50 years, it's considered extinct. So things don't look good for species like the Jamaican iguana, a lost relative of this guy. Sometimes I wish my relatives would get lost, but not forever. <laughs> Henry, don't walk there. The cement's not dry yet. I'm doing it on purpose. All the big stars do. I'm leaving my footprints for my admirers. Once they dry, they'll last forever. Uh, how long are you supposed to stay in there? <laughs> oh, just a second or two. Uh, oh, oh, up. Uh, I no. knew it. Oh, no. It's dry. I'm stuck. Get me out of here. <laughs>
Henry, are you all right? My roof, my museum, and my footprints! Cheer up, Henry. You know, millions of years ago, there were some really famous lizards who left their footprints behind, too. Like these. Were they movie stars? No, dinosaurs. And all the marks and the bones they left behind are called fossils, which means they've turned to stone. So what's so great about a load of old bones? Without fossils, we wouldn't even know the dinosaurs existed. <gasps> you mean, no T-Rex action figures? No Jurassic jungle juice? Nope. If it weren't for fossils, we also wouldn't know that birds all descended from this, the Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx? Archaeopteryx, a flying reptile with feathers. Some guys just have to be different. Fossils of plants help us picture the world as the dinosaurs must have seen it 200 million years ago. Ah, the good old days for us reptiles. When the Arizona desert was nothing but swampy forest, where giant trees towered over a prehistoric landscape. So what happened? Floods knocked them over, and they were buried deep in mud. That's what I call a forest mire! <laughs> Down in the mud, an amazing transformation took place. The swamps dried up. The trees turned slowly to stone over millions of years. And when the earth around them eroded away, the tree fossils were uncovered. Leaving us with this, the petrified forest. Petrified? How can a forest be scared? Petrified means turned to stone, which is all that's left of the dinosaurs in the world they knew. So even though they're extinct, we can still say, Dinosaurs rock! Oh, brother. Tuesday, stay out of the art gallery. You've done enough damage. You've got an art gallery, too? Oh, yeah. Is this it? Welcome to my collection of reptilian masterpieces. First, we have the Mona Henry, painted by Leonardo the Lizard. Isn't it beautiful? Hmm. They don't paint them like that anymore. The eyes follow you around the room. Maybe you prefer something modern, like Pablo Pigeco. Don't you just love it? Love wasn't the word I had in mind. Huh? Hmm. But if you really want to see a masterpiece, you can't beat a good sculpture. This one cost me an arm and a leg. But I'll buy the arm and the leg back when I've had some paying customers. Wow, it's great, Henry. But, uh, well, isn't it a little unrealistic? I mean, you're not quite that big in real life. I know. I want little lizards in the future to think that I was big, big, big. Besides, if extinct animals can leave giant fossils behind, why can't I? Because not all of them were big either, Henry. Even the extinct relatives of some giant animals were surprisingly small. It wasn't all giant lizards and mega mammoths in prehistoric times. Today's hippopotamus had an extinct relative which would have been only as big as the youngest babies in this modern-day herd. They were pygmies. Is that because they were the size of pigs? No, pygmy means small. On the islands of the Mediterranean, there were once pygmy deer, pygmy birds, pygmy goats, even pygmy elephants. So where'd the little fellows go? The way of most animals. If you counted up all the animal species that ever lived on Earth, there'd be more extinct ones than living. Excuse me, but isn't that kind of sad? Yes. But most extinctions are part of nature's process. They're animals who just couldn't keep up with changing conditions. The story of the pygmy caribou is slightly different. Did they have a caribou boo? It's not funny, Henry. A shy relative of the reindeer, they lived on a secluded island off of western Canada. They were much smaller than these, growing no taller than your average fawn. I feel fond of them already. 
Small and elusive, they lived peacefully in the protection of their woods until European settlers appeared on the island over a hundred years ago. The settlers shot down every pygmy caribou they could find. I'd say those hunters had pygmy brains. In those days, most people didn't understand the importance of conservation, but now they do, and things are finally changing. But it's too late for those poor little deers. Henry! Henry, it's time for your report on the elephant bird. What? Now? Yes, now. Out of my way! Journal lizard coming through! Henry! Tree frog gets frog in his throat. And giraffe discovers amazing new toothbrush bird. But now, our top story. Faucet leak sensational warning. Long ago, animals were really different from what we see today. Snakes rode skates, prawns went crackers, and strangest of all, there were elephant birds, uh, with propellers. They flew low to the ground to avoid meerkat radar, which was easy since radar hadn't been invented yet. Taking off was no problem for elephant birds, but landing was... They flew around using soft animals to land on, causing many species to become extinct. Dinosaurs, doodle birds, and lounge entertainers. Only the rhino was truly safe. Some think these elephant birds have disappeared. Actually, they've only faded slightly. So look out, wear a helmet like this, and watch for falling peanut shells, cause you never know when an elephant bird might land on you. And next, the weather. The weather? The weather, I got it right or whether I got it wrong. Take a guess. Rats. I think you got your elephant birds confused, Henry. What? You mean one of those guys? Where are the propellers? I'm talking about on the African island of Madagascar, where there used to live a species of pygmy elephant. An ancient legend tells of an elephant bird, which could carry as many as four elephants in its enormous talons. That's one way to win a talon contest. The bird was called the rock. <laughs> Excuse me, rocks can't fly. This rock could. The legend claims the rock would swoop out of the sky and nab the biggest animal it could lift. Hey, you guys! Who wants a free rock ride? Then it would take them back to its nest and eat them. Don't look at us. You're an elephant bird. Go hunt for elephants! It may be that tales like this were invented to help people explain why some animals became extinct. Like the pygmy elephant. Right. Well, maybe it's true. There was a rock. Mighty hunter of the sky! Who got so hungry? He could eat a whole elephant. Well, Henry, most myths are based on some truth, and once there were some very large birds on the island. It's unlikely they ate elephants, though. But I know how they would have liked it if they did. How? On the rocks. Oh. Tuesday! Where's my new roof? If you want a job done right, don't ask a crab. Lucky we're having such nice weather, or it could be disaster for your museum. Yeah! All we'd need is just a little rain and the whole place would be... Ruined! Ah! 
Quick, Henry, cover up your exhibits before they're destroyed. I told that Pikeko guy to use watercolors, but that's ridiculous. Oh, no. Ah, this bad weather is wrecking everything. My museum, it's a disaster. Don't you think you're exaggerating just a little, Henry? Hey, you aren't opening a narrator museum in ten minutes. Yikes, look at this. Animals all have to put up with a little rainy weather. Your customers should be used to it. Mm, what if it doesn't stop? Well, major weather changes can cause problems. Yeah, like wet seats in the snack bar. I'm talking about flooding that ruins habitats, driving animals to extinction. So this is much better. Don't count on it, Henry. When rains won't come, animals go thirsty. <laughs> Get me some lemonade. With drought comes fire. More animal homes are lost. Proof that natural disasters can cause natural extinctions. Count on you to look on the bright side. Why don't they just move to new homes? People can often move away from a disaster, like a volcano. But many animals have no choice. Once their environment has been destroyed, that's it. In the last ice age, the whole earth changed. It turned much colder, and most of the land became covered in ice. Many animals couldn't adapt. When the ice disappeared, the animals went with it, all due to natural causes. Talk about your hot and cold running weather. At least those walruses can handle the cold. Thank goodness for blubber. Right. Species that have adapted well to environmental changes can survive for millions of years. And I was worried I might lose customers before I even opened the museum. Don't worry, Henry. Okay, but I might install central heating, just in case there's another ice age. That's a good idea, Henry. What? Having different entrances for different animals. It'll make everyone feel welcome to your museum. Yeah. Birds. Uh, hmm. I hope I didn't forget one for the... Oh. Birds. Check. Hmm. Mice. Check. Wait a minute, Henry. How do people get in the museum? Excuse me. Can't you read the sign? No people allowed. This is a museum for animals, by animals. Aw, come on, Henry. Can't you even let in little people? Mm, well, maybe little people are okay, but no grown-ups. They only mess things up. I kind of understand your feelings, Henry. People and animals don't always mix so well. Have I ever told you about the American bison? No, but I'm sure you're about to. Once there were millions and millions of bison living all over North America. But when the European settlers came along, they were almost made extinct. Those Europeans sure had a funny way of settling in. The Native Americans only hunted what bison they needed, and they used every bit they could. But when the settlers moved west, they killed bison by the million just to clear the land for their farms. Excuse me, is that any way to share? The famous cowboy Buffalo Bill killed more than 4,000 bison in just over a year. <laughs> he almost made it Buffalo Nil. People didn't realize the damage they were doing, but now they do, and they've helped the bison to make a big comeback. So maybe humans aren't all bad. Humans have been careless in the past, so it's up to people today to protect animals from any more senseless extinctions which is what these people are doing with tortoises. I thought that was a funny-shaped backpack. 
These Galapagos tortoises are some of the oldest animals on Earth. They can live to be well over a hundred years old. Wow! No wonder they need to be carried. Once, these tortoises numbered in their thousands all over the South American islands. These people are bringing male and female tortoises together so they can mate and have babies. With luck, their numbers will increase again. Just one thing. What's that, Henry? How are they supposed to find that special someone when all the girls are named Shelly? <laughs> <laughs> And now, ladies and gentle lizards, it's time for a Henry's Amazing Golden Gecko Award. The winners of my all-time best extinct animals are... In third place, the Tasmanian emu, who sadly couldn't be here this evening. The award is collected by his Australian cousins on his behalf. The last survivor fell into his owner's swimming pool and drowned. It just goes to show, feathers and water don't mix. The second place award is received by a relative of the late St. Stephen's Wren, a little bird whose remaining population was eaten up by a lighthouse keeper's cat. But never fear! Tonight's Golden Gecko Award for distinction in the face of extinction goes to the tar pan! No, it's not a pan full of tar. Tar pans were a direct ancestor of the modern day horse. They were small, slim, fun-loving creatures which had the bad luck of also being pretty delicious to eat. Or so thought the people who just couldn't get enough of them. By the year 1900 or so, they had spun out of existence. But extinct isn't always forever. All the genetic information, which made the tar pan happen, is still going around in the horses of today. After years of careful selection and crossbreeding, animal experts can now present to us these frisky little ponies they say are a dead ringer for the original tarpan. An amazing happy ending. And we can now see for ourselves. The tarpan is intelligent and graceful. Plus, it's especially attractive when photographed in slow motion at sunset. So, for going over the brink, becoming extinct, then climbing back into the rink, here you go, Tarpan! This golden gecko's for you! Henry, it's time! The museum is opening in two minutes. Shouldn't you be getting ready? Just a few last-minute touches to the most important room. Which one? The gift shop! Look, I've got cool toys and yummy candies and this great toy car and, uh, loads of stuff! Honestly, Henry, I can't understand why you're so concerned about being remembered like this. Are you kidding? What if us lizards became extinct too? Ever since the dinosaurs went, we've been pretty sensitive about that sort of thing. Okay, okay. I guess I understand your concern. Mm -hmm. But there's really no shortage of lizards at the moment. How do you know? Have you seen the line outside? Wow! I haven't seen so many lizards in all my life! See, Henry? At least some amazing animals don't have to worry about becoming extinct. Thanks for coming, everyone! Okay, kids, form a straight line. Welcome to the Henry Museum!